Video games have been in the mainstream for a hot minute, meaning they've been through many phases in their lifetime, beginning with the 8-bit era to the 16-bit era, the late 90s where everybody wanted to experiment with 3D landscapes. Eventually, we got the rise of PC gaming with RuneScape, Doom, and Diablo, the time where every video game for PS3 and Xbox 360 had that same gritty color palette of brown and gray, from 2017 to 2019 where every game needed a battle royale mode. There's been many occurrences in video game history where products have followed the same trends as others, and right now, I believe we are in something that I like to call the dark age of video games. Starting from 2010, we've all gotten used to disappointment. Duke Nukem Forever took 14 years to develop, from 1996 to 2011. When it released, it was an absolute mess, and the fans who waited 14 years were enraged. Some thought this would be the end of it, games releasing unfinished. However, this wasn't the case at all. Followed 76, Cyberpunk 2077, No Man's Sky, Battlefield 2042. There are companies that have a complete track record of making unfinished games, such as Game Mill Entertainment, known for disasters such as Gollum, Rise of Kong, and The Walking Dead Destinies that told its story through slideshow images instead of actual cutscenes. This was you, not me! No, 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 no. <laughs> if you guys are regulars on the channel, you definitely know that I'm a huge fan of Rockstar Games. I mean, the in-house projects are always amazing and released in a complete, polished state. But before I even say it, I'm sure you already know what I'm going to be talking about. <sighs> the definitive... I'm sorry, the Definitive Editions. If I'm being completely honest, I was actually really excited for the Definitive Editions release. I knew the games had a wacky art style, and I saw the glitches shown in the pre-release screenshots, but I didn't care. GTA 5 controls, updated quality of life features, so many promises, so much money for 20 to 15 year old games, but no, I thought. Not Rockstar. I still have no doubt in my mind. They delivered Grand Theft Auto 5, Red Dead Redemption 2, Bully, they published Ellie Noir. they made Max Payne 3. I mean, surely there's a reason for the $80 price tag. When I saw the enormous price they were asking, I assumed that there would be some new features, such as cut content from previous games like the Gator Keys that was supposed to be in Vice City, or the first person mode that was supposed to be in GTA 3. Maybe they'd even add the real planes that originally were in GTA 3 before they cut them out of the game because of the 9-11 attack. Eventually it was release day, and I had to wait four days before I could actually play the game. That's right everybody, the game on PC launched so terribly that Rockstar pulled it from the launcher for four days. I remember checking the server status on the Rockstar website over and over just because I wanted to experience the games. By the time they were finally added back, it was pretty unfortunate. I mean I had tons of fun. I've always loved the 3D GTA games and I beat GTA 3 in two days, but it was just a worse GTA 3. Textures were broken, weather was broken, and the animations on the newer models looked really janky. Everything felt rushed out the door, and most of all, Liberty City didn't feel like Liberty City. All of the intended art direction for GTA 3 was dead in the dirt. The grim dark city that was made so beautifully on the PlayStation 2 was completely painted over in this shiny, almost Vice City aesthetic. Worst of all, Rockstar pulled all the original games off digital stores so that people would be forced to play the newer, expensive versions. I have no idea what they were thinking. The optimist in me wants to believe that Rockstar's parent company didn't like how long they were taking on their in-house projects, so they forced the company to rush something out the door but there's no proof that that's what happened. So that was a really disappointing launch. I mean, hey, at least there's Steam achievements now and there's mission checkpoints in San Andreas. But other than that, very sad launch, especially because it came from my favorite video game publisher of all time. Going off script for a second, but I think it's so silly how a company like 2K could remake their first Mafia game from the ground up, but the company behind the most profitable video game franchise of all time couldn't make a remake. They hired an indie company to rush out half-baked remasters. It just doesn't make sense to me. So why are so many broken games coming out recently? This definitely didn't happen on the scale that it does today, so... What went wrong? I believe we are currently in a transitional period in the video game world. Back in 2005, games were not nearly as expensive to make. Less polygons meant less detail on the eyelids opening and closing, making sure that breath could be seen in the cold. Due to the simplicity of it all, companies could pump out video games left and right, but with companies like Rockstar and Nintendo constantly innovating and setting new standards, other companies had to catch up. The problem with games like Call of Duty is that they could be annually released no problem at all 10 years ago. I mean, even Grand Theft Auto was annual at one point. However, 
Now that there's a much bigger standard for a quality AAA title, companies like Blizzard and Activision are forced to meet a nearly impossible quota for a yearly release. This is resulting in games like Modern Warfare 3 reusing maps from the previous title to save development time. Because the game is in desperate need of attention, developers are being forced to work ungodly hours to rush out a product. Eventually, the standard for a quality title will get so high that companies like Activision won't be able to release a yearly Call of Duty anymore. I predict that eventually they'll be forced to release a Call of Duty game that they'll have to update over over the course of a few years before releasing an entirely new game. So right now, corporations just aren't prepared for the standard that's constantly getting bigger, and everything's kind of falling apart. Although, I am getting kind of tired of developers skipping out on love for their projects. Especially when games like Cyberpunk had such clear love and passion put into the story, and then a corporation went and threw that all away just for some quick money so they didn't have to wait any longer. The age of broken video games is as much the consumer's fault as the company's. Pre-ordering is a dirty business. At least on Steam, you can refund it easily, but if you're on PlayStation, for example, and you want to refund a game, you have to go to the PlayStation website and request a refund and maybe even talk to a bot, and this is pretty annoying if you're refunding a game that you were promised and the company didn't deliver. Another Another characteristic seen in the dark age of video games is microtransactions. And unlike broken video games, which I think this trend will kind of die off over time, at least I hope, that's again the optimistic in me, I think microtransactions are here to stay. You guys want to know what it's like walking downtown in southern Ontario? Open a AAA game and experience every click to be paused with. Spare some change? Hey, you got five bucks? You got some green, homie? I promise you there is no difference. It's criminal that you already have to pay nine $90 in Canada for a new video game, and you can't even unlock all of the content by playing. It's like companies don't even want you to play the game anymore. People talk bad about shark cards in GTA, and I 100% agree that it's a scummy service, but at least you can unlock everything in GTA Online by playing the game. I think that microtransactions are totally appropriate in a game like Fortnite that's free to play. Every game mode is free for anybody, and if you really want to buy a cool character that doesn't benefit you whatsoever aside from looking cool, that's awesome. However, in Call of Duty that already has a steep price tag and then a billion other DLCs, that's just greasy. The Dark Age has gone on long enough, and as somebody that loves video games, it sucks that as consumers, we have to be cautious not to be excited for a cool looking game because it may be unfinished at launch and require a day one patch. For example, Star Wars Outlaws looks absolutely breathtaking, but unfortunately the developer is shit fuck bitch soft that is known for blatantly lying in their trailers, so unfortunately I can't be excited for this because there's a chance this may be fake footage. Games have gotten so broken that when a game is released in a finished state, it's praised and loved by the community even more just because it's finished. The fact that meeting the bare minimum is an achievement now is crazy. I've recently been enjoying a game called Battle Bit, and if you guys liked playing Call of Duty and Battlefield back in the day, I highly recommend this game. The developers are passionate about the project, it's 20 bucks, and you can unlock every camo and bonus just by playing the game and leveling up. There's a 130 versus 130 game mode which is pretty insane, but it's really fun with friends thanks to proximity voice chat. Just a classic fun gaming experience. I highly recommend it. Love to support a project made from passion. Obviously, because, you know, I, I'm a pretty small channel, this is not sponsored. I just really like this game. Finally, and most importantly, what do you guys think about the Dark Age? Do you think that companies won't learn from their mistakes and video games will crash because nothing will be good anymore? Or do you think that developers will stop rushing things out the door? Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll respond as soon as I can. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video and make sure to have a good one.